In this lesson, we're going to learn to draw a very basic human figure. That is, the entire body, not just the face. Now, the human figure might look a little difficult. It may look complicated, but it's not really. It's just as simple as any other drawing. You take simple shapes and you piece them together to make a more complicated shape. And since we're all people and all have the same parts, then the uh, shapes that we put together pretty much are the same for everybody. The whole point behind this human figure lesson is that you learn how your body is put together and how to represent that with simple shapes and that you learn how your body moves so that you're not stuck drawing a human figure in just one pose. All you have to do is learn how to draw the human figure and then you would be able to put that uh, figure into any pose you want. So all you need for this lesson is, once again, a pencil with an eraser and a sheet of paper. Art's not that complicated. All right, now, to begin, we're gonna draw a human figure so it pretty much fills the page. We're gonna start at the top because, you know, there's a lot. There's the head and a lot underneath it. So we're gonna start at the top and draw an oval for the head. Once again, I'm drawing this way darker than I normally would. You need to draw very lightly in case you make a mistake or have to change something. And also because a lot of this that we're drawing uh, is going to have to be erased at the end whether we make a mistake or not. We're drawing basically guideline shapes where the figure is going to be and then we'll put a figure on top of it. But draw an oval for the head. Now the next body part down from the head is the neck. You might draw a trapezoid or a rectangle for the neck. Remember, as in the uh, frontal portrait, the neck is almost as wide as the head. Next, the shoulders, just as in the frontal portrait. Lines coming at a slight angle down at the bottom of the neck. Now each shoulder by itself is going to be about as wide as a head. That's how, head, that's how wide the head is. That's also how wide the shoulder is. Now notice I did not say the shoulders all together are as wide as a head. You don't want the shoulders stopping here. That would be way too small for a person. Each shoulder by itself is about the same width as a head. You can play with that a little bit, but not too much. You don't want the shoulders to look way too big or way too small. Now, after the shoulders, we're gonna draw what's called the torso. Now, this is not a true torso because a true torso would be everything from the neck down to where the legs come out of the hips. In uh, our vocabulary, the torso is the chest and the stomach. And an easy way to interpret that is to just draw from the end of one shoulder, you come down to a spot that is deep enough that it could easily contain that person's chest and stomach, come across, and come back up to the end of the other shoulder. Now, the way some artists do it is they will draw actually the chest and the stomach. They'll draw a rectangular or oval shape for where the chest is, and then they'll draw an oval or rectangular shape for where the stomach is, and then they'll tack in a more or less triangular shape for where the ribs were, and they'll build it all that way. Unless the person's going to be shirtless and you want to be uh, working a lot with muscles, then that's not really necessary. You just need this U shape, or you can think of it as an oval shape, um, to represent the entire torso, just make it deep enough so that it can easily contain that chest and the stomach. This line, by the way, will be the waist down here at the bottom of the torso. Now, after we have the torso, we want to draw the hips. That's basically a rectangle or a trapezoid that is about as wide as the torso. After we draw the hips, we're going to want to start drawing the legs. Now, a thing to remember is the legs come in two parts. 
an upper leg and a lower leg. As in here, upper leg down to the knee and a lower leg from the knee down to the foot. And both of those parts are straight. The upper leg is always perfectly straight. The lower leg is always perfectly straight. Never bend the upper leg or the lower leg. Now, you might say that you bend your leg all the time, but you don't really. You pivot these two straight parts at the knee and at the hip. So, for the upper leg, we're going to draw a rectangle or an oval that starts at the outside of the hips, comes down, and then comes right into about where the middle of the hips are. Now you might be wondering how long to make that oval or that rectangle. You need to think of this uh, leg as being half of the total length of the body. So from the top of the head to the bottom of the hips, that's about how long the legs are going to be. So go ahead and measure that space and give half of it to the upper leg and half of it to the lower leg. This is the knee down here at the bottom of the upper leg. Now from the knee down, you draw the lower leg. Remember, like I said, when you're done, that leg, if it's stretched out straight, should be about as long as the whole upper half of the body. If it's a little bit short or a little bit long, that's fine. People have different length legs. But if it's a lot short or a lot long, you need to make some adjustments. I just made mine a little bit longer. Now, right down here, this will be the ankle. And then from the ankle, you have the feet. The feet you can draw as a couple ovals. We're not quite done. We need to come back up and draw the arms. The arms also, just like the leg, come in two parts. An upper arm and a lower arm. Both parts of the arm are straight. They never bend. If you bend any part of the arm, that person is no longer a human being. You can pivot those two uh, straight parts right here at the elbow and right there where the arm comes out of the shoulder. But both parts need to be straight. So here we are coming right out of the shoulder. We have the upper arm, an oval or rectangle, and that upper arm should be long enough so that this, the elbow, if you swung that arm down, would hit that person right in the waist. Remember, if you swung that arm down, that elbow would hit that person right in the waist. Now, coming out of that elbow, you have the lower arm. You're usually, well, it's not absolutely required, you're usually going to have the lower arm kind of switch directions even a little bit at the elbow. We very rarely have our arms perfectly straight. Now, the lower arm will be an oval or rectangle and it'll be about the same length as the upper arm. This right here at the end of the lower arm, that's your wrist. Next, you're gonna draw the hands. You're going to start by drawing the palm of the hand. That can be an oval, a square, a trapezoid. I usually use a trapezoid because when I look at my own hand, I see it's broader up here where the fingers are and narrower down here where the wrist is. Now, coming out of the end of that palm, you have four fingers. Probably you're going to use four ovals for that, or four rectangles. Don't worry, we'll account for the fifth one in a minute. Uh, pay attention to your fingers. They're not all the same length. 
Some are shorter, some are longer. So you have four fingers coming out of the end of that hand. Then coming out of the side of that hand, you have your thumb, which is also represented with an oval or a rectangle. There you go. Now that's what we would call the armature for the human figure. It's a basic, very quick idea of how the human figure is put together. It also is a very basic idea of the pose of this particular person you're drawing. You should be able to draw this armature very quickly. If you uh, practice getting all the parts on and getting the parts the right length, practice that uh, for a little while, and then you should start practice trying to do it with speed. Uh, we draw this armature so that we can get everything the right size and everything in the right position so that we don't have to worry about it when we start putting the actual person and all its details on top of this. If you were drawing the actual person with all its details right now and then you got the legs the wrong length, that's a lot of wasted time on your part. So start learning to draw an armature very quickly. Judge it for whether or not all the parts are the right size and in the right pose. And then, when that's taken care of, you go ahead and uh, put all the details on. By the way, this armature, it will be completely erased at the end of your picture. That's why you should draw this very, very lightly. And you don't have to worry about being pretty either. You just have to worry about it being in the right pose, being the right size, and everything on it being the right proportion. Because, you know, you're going to erase it anyway, so it doesn't have to look pretty. Now that we have the armature, we start putting the actual person on there. We're going to start with the clothes. Um, when you put clothes on a person, make the clothes fit the person like your clothes would fit you. Some people would draw a couple lines here and say he's wearing a shirt. No, he's not. He's wearing a couple, arm he's wearing a couple lines on his arm. Make the clothes fit the way yours would fit. Draw all those parts of the clothes. Draw his collar. Nobody really cares what the collar looks like except for you. So you need to think about what the collar should look like. But do put the collar on there. After you have the person's collar on their shirt, draw the shirt coming down their shoulders. Their shoulder is not their shirt. It's just the thing that supports the shirt. So make sure you draw the actual shirt coming down the shoulder. This is just uh, as a beginner to make sure that you don't forget to draw parts of the clothes, which can be pretty embarrassing. So uh, until you become really, really uh, uh, good at this and you've had lots of practice, then draw every part of the clothes so that you don't forget something. All right, now we can draw the sleeves coming down the arm. Now here's the thing to remember, there will be places where that sleeve will touch the arm and places where it won't touch the arm, where it will hang off the arm. Make sure you think about that when you're drawing. Also there will be places where there are wrinkles. There's bound to be wrinkles right there at the armpit and there may be wrinkles on the sleeve itself. So think about where the wrinkles would be and draw them as well. And think about where that material will hang off of the arm and where it'll touch the arm. Then we're going to draw the part of the shirt that covers the chest. And it'll be coming down off the shoulders, it'll be coming down the torso, and then it's going to hang off the torso, pretty much guaranteed, even if it's not a shirt that's tucked in, it's going to hang off that person's torso at the waist. Think about where the wrinkles would be and put wrinkles in there. Um, you don't have to really know where wrinkles are. You yourself right now are wearing clothes, uh, most likely. Um, so go ahead and just put the wrinkles where they are on your own clothes. There, that's it for the shirt. Now we're going to draw this person's pants. We're going to start the pants at the waist. If you were going to draw shorts, you would start them at the waist. If you were going to draw a skirt, you would start it at the waist. So make sure you know where the waist is. Don't confuse the waist 
with right here at the bottom of the hips. The pants are going to start up here at the waist. I'm going to draw a belt. What you draw is really pretty much up to you. I just want you to remember where should these clothes start and stop and how should they fit the body. So there's a belt at his waist. And then I need to draw the pants coming down his hips. And you really do need to draw them coming down the hips. Do not use his hips as his pants. Your hips are not your pants, so his hips should not be his pants either. The details of the clothes that I'm putting in here, the wrinkles, the pockets, the fly of the pants, that sort of thing, these are personal things. You figure out exactly what clothes you want your person to wear and then put those appropriate wrinkles in there. Now I'm going to draw the pants coming down his leg. Do not use the leg as his pants. Draw the pants coming down the leg. I think I've beaten that idea to death here, but that is one of the most common mistakes beginners will make, is that they will use the body as the person's clothes. And then they'll wonder why it does not look right. It doesn't look right because our body is not our clothes. There are places where our clothes will hang off of our body. There are places where our clothes will touch our body. And so we need to duplicate that in the clothes this person's wearing. You're going to have wrinkles at the knees if the clothes come down that far. And you're probably going to have wrinkles down here at the ankle if the clothes come down that far. Remember, these are all guidelines. They're not written in stone, but they're pretty good guidelines. So you should really consider them when you're uh, putting your picture together. So now he has a shirt, he has pants. Um, shoes. And, you know, in this case, they pretty much just go around the ovals for um, those feet. But not all shoes will do the same thing. And that's pretty much it for the clothes on this person. Uh, but this person has bare arms. We don't want these two rectangles or ovals sitting there on his arms. That makes him look somewhat like he's made out of popsicle sticks. What we want to do is shape the arms so that they look like actual arms. So we have to be thinking in terms about the muscles. Now at this basic level, we don't need to get into a lot of detail about the muscles. but we can get into what the shape of the arm would be. Like right here at the elbow. The arm's gonna be shaped one way going up above the elbow and one way below the elbow. Start at the elbow. From there, the arm is gonna start getting thicker as it goes up. Doesn't have to even be a lot thicker, but it's going to get thicker as it goes up. You might even show a little bit of a bump there for where the elbow actually is. Maybe. Now, from the elbow down, the arm is going to start out thicker. And then it's going to get thinner down by the wrist. So you're going to have the arm start out thicker and get thinner down by the wrist. So you have to come out from that overall rectangle up here by the elbow and then curve it back in to where the wrist is. And that will give that arm an actual arm shape. We can also do some things with the hands, but they're kind of small for this lesson, so we'll save that for another one. Uh, but at this point, you have the person pretty much done, except you have a lot of erasing to do. You might notice you can see this person's legs right through his pants. You can see this person's torso right through his shirt. And you have these extra lines on his arm. So you need to get rid of all those. Remember, when you're drawing the armature at the very beginning, all of those, arm, all of those lines are going to be erased. So draw them light enough that you can do that easily. We can start by erasing this line at the bottom of the neck. Then erasing where we can see the person's chest right through his clothes. Unless he's wearing see-through clothes, we're not going to be able to do that. And 
And then we're going to a race where we can see this person's arm right through his shirt sleeves. And then, very important, we're going to race where we can see this person's hips right through their pants. So that line at the bottom of that rectangle for the hips, that's got to go. And you might have to get rid of some lines right there at the edge. Then we're going to a race where we can see his legs right through his pants. Okay, almost there. Now we have these bare arms that we shaped so they look like arms. So let's get rid of the armature lines inside there. We're going to leave just the shape of the arms. And especially this line here at the elbow, we want to get rid of that. If you look at your own elbow, you don't have a line there. And a line here at the wrist, we're going to get rid of that. And this line here at the fingers, we're going to get rid of that. Now as you get more experience, you'll find that some of this detail you're going to want to put back in or you're just going to want to take parts of it out. But at this point, we want to get rid of all those things because they make the person look somewhat artificial, kind of robotic. And there we are. That's our human figure. You might notice I did not draw a face. You can go ahead and draw a face on there, but if you take the trouble to draw a realistic human figure, then please take the trouble to draw a realistic face on them according to the lessons we have on drawing portraits. But there's a human figure right there.